Hey guys, welcome back. This is going to be USMLE Step 1 Buzzwords Part 4. I apologize that I haven't posted a video in a little while. I had a bit of trouble with the recording software. But if this is the first time that you're finding my channel, please subscribe. I make helpful videos about the path to becoming a physician, everything from applying to medical school to doing well on your board exams and everything in between. So please subscribe. And let's go ahead and get started with the buzzwords. The first one is going to be M spike, and if you see this in a question, they may they may also give you a graph of the um, protein electrophoresis. If you see an M spike, you want to be thinking about multiple myeloma. Next one, mushrooms. If you ever see in a question, they we're talking about a patient that ate mushrooms or went camping and, and may have eaten some of the vegetation, you want to be thinking about muscarin poisoning. Musty body odor in an infant or a mousy body odor. Most medical students know this one. Uh, it's phenylketonuria. NADPH oxidase deficiency. This is another enzyme deficiency that you really need to know, and it's a sign of chronic granulomatous disease. And this is where uh, immune cells can't form the oxidative burst to destroy other microorganisms. Negri bodies. I believe I've talked about this one in the high yield images videos, and that's referring to the rabies virus. They might give you a picture of it. It's a little bit low yield because it's pretty tough, but if they ever mention Negri bodies, you definitely want to be thinking about rabies virus. And also remember, if they're mentioning bats, rabies virus as well. An opening snap murmur. The murmurs were always a bit confusing for me, especially with the different descriptions, but one that's usually pretty constant is when you see an opening snap murmur, you want to be thinking about mitral stenosis. Orange bodily fluids. There's a couple of different scenarios where this can come up, but the one that I've mainly seen in questions is if there's rifampin use, uh, usually to treat TB. Orphan anti-I nuclei, I talked about this one as well before. This is going to be papillary thyroid carcinoma. That's the association that you want to make. Osler's nodes, if you see these, uh, it's going to be a sign of bacterial endocarditis. Remember, these are the painful nodes on the fingers. Pianca, I know there's a couple different conditions associated with this as well, but the one that I've seen the most is uh, eosinophilic granulomatosis with polyangiitis, or they may call it Churg strauss syndrome. Those are both names that are used interchangeably. Postcoital bleeding, uh, again, a couple different differentials for this as well, but the main, the main thing you want to be thinking of is cervical cancer. Peaked T waves, if you see this uh, in a vignette or you see it on an EKG, it's pretty noticeable. Uh, it's going to be referring to hyperkalemia. This usually doesn't refer until there's pretty severe uh, hyperkalemia, but you might see it in an EKG or on a question. Pigeon droppings, if you ever see this, the first thing you want to be thinking about is cryptococcus. That's usually the, the only association they'll make with pigeon droppings on the test. Pregnancy, okay, obviously I know this is a pretty a broad term and there's a lot of things associated with pregnancy, but the one thing that I want you to keep in mind is that pregnancy causes a respiratory alkalosis. I've seen this as a question straight up and I've seen this uh, being referenced in a couple of different ways. Women who become pregnant are in a constant chronic state of respiratory alkalosis. Very mild, but it's, it's constantly there. PTH-related peptide. Really, the only time you're going to see this come up is if they're talking about squamous cell carcinoma of the lung. This is one of several perineoplastic syndromes that occurs in the lung. Punched out lesions on x-ray. Uh, this is usually going to be associated with multiple myeloma as well. There are a lot of different conditions that can cause osteolytic lesions, but generally when they say punched out, um, they're really pointing you towards multiple myeloma. And I have seen them actually say punched out lesions in some questions. Pufferfish, really the only time that I've ever seen this in a question, and I think it was just literally one question, is they're trying to talk about tetrodotoxin. I believe this is a neurotoxin. You don't need to know too much about the mechanism, but if you ever see pufferfish in a question, uh, someone was scuba diving and they got stung by a puffer fish or something like that. Uh, you definitely want to be thinking about tetrodotoxin. Pulsus paradoxus, if you see this, it's going to be in reference to cardiac tamponade. Ragged red muscle fibers, this description is classic for mitochondrial myopathy. Raffi nucleus, this is again one of the nuclei that you have to uh, be able to identify what neurotransmitter is being produced, and in this case for the Raffae nucleus, it's going to be serotonin or 5-hydroxytryptophan. Right angle branching hyphae, there's a couple different uh, organisms that display this, but the main one that you're going to see on your exam is mucor. 
Romana's sign, if you see this, it's going to be talking about Chagas disease. So be aware, especially if a person uh, traveled to South America recently, you want to be thinking about Chagas disease. Rosenthal fibers, the conditions where you're going to see this is pilocytic astrocytoma, which I believe is primarily going to be in children. And rotary nystagmus here uh, is going to be associated with PCP use. Also, if you see vertical nystagmus, that one in particular is also associated with PCP use. Be on the lookout for a patient that's, you know, incredibly violent and, you know, kind of almost superhuman strength. Uh, and they're also displaying some nystagmus. Roth spots, if you see this, this is another sign of endocarditis. Seal-like barking cough. Most medical students already know this one. This is going to be croup. Self-mutilating behavior, you're primarily going to see this in, uh, in young boys, and that's going to be talking about Leshnayan syndrome. Situs inversus, this is where the organs uh, in, the, in the chest and abdomen are, are reversed. They're kind of flipped on an axis, and usually the only time you're going to see that is with Cartagner syndrome. Skip lesions, uh, I see this word, this term come up a lot, and it's usually in reference to Crohn's disease. Remember, Crohn's disease is the one that's not continuous, so it has these skip lesions. Ulcerative colitis is continuous. Smudge cells, uh, the, the time when I see this, it's going to be in reference to chronic lymphocytic leukemia. People like to remember this as CLL stands for crushed little lymphocytes. So if you see smudge cell, it literally looks on the peripheral blood smear like somebody just pressed their finger up against the cell. And the association you want to make there is CLL. So thank you so much for watching. Please leave me a comment. Please subscribe. I hope this video was helpful and good luck studying.